in Texas. Eva the horn on your bus. It's an event outside Texas Memorial Stadium. That's what Mac Brown calls it anyway. Every time there's a home game, he's looking for his fourth 5-0 start during his tenure. And for Colt McCoy, a kiss for luck, and he's on his way to the locker room. The Longhorns trying to go to 5-0. They're number two in the country. They meet the Colorado Buffaloes tonight. Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. We bring you to the capital of Texas, Austin, as you look in the tunnel of Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. That group is undefeated. They're number two in the country. They are the Texas Longhorns. And here they come. like they were a year ago with Oklahoma just around the corner next Saturday at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. But first, in the way tonight, Colorado. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews with Matt Brown. this Colorado run game may be the best you see all year. What's key in going up against them? Well, we really haven't seen a tough run game, Aaron. We've been in games with spread all week and, I mean, all year, and this will be the first time that you, you've got three really good backs, uh, an offensive line that's 6'6", 6 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 so unless we can stop the run, they're going to control the clock, keep the ball away from us. You come into the game such a big favorite. What did you tell your team to focus on tonight rather than looking ahead to next week in Oklahoma? Got to play to a standard. We want to be the best team in the country to get there. We've got to get better each week, and that's really important tonight. Mac, thanks. Thank you. All right, Brad. All right, Aaron. Of course, Florida and LSU get together a little bit later. You look at these two teams, number two, Texas. On the right-hand side, all those gaudy statistics. A lot of people think they're not as good as what the preseason rankings had them. But quite frankly, they're right where they were a year ago. Colorado, not so lucky. Welcome to Austin, everybody. Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge. This is where we're glad that they don't play them on yeah, paper, Todd, because right. you look at that and you go, why are we here? But quite frankly, Colorado, I don't think, is quite as bad as everybody thinks they are. And, you know, they're coming from the cold and the snow in Colorado into the fire in Austin, Texas tonight. Well, and, you know, the thing about it is when you're dealing with 18 to 22-year-old kids, you never know exactly what you're going to get. Colorado, for their part, they've got to hope they get some help from Texas. They've got to hope Texas is a little bit flat, maybe a little careless with the football. On their part, what they have to do is they've got to control the football. They can't get away from their running game, even if they struggle, and they must limit big plays. They've already given up 11 plays of 40 yards or more in right. four games. That's the same number of plays like that the entire year last year. You know, Max sort of alluded to it with Aaron. Texas just trying to play up to their own standard or maybe the other three or four best teams in the country. The last game they played against UTEP, very consistent effort on both sides of the ball. Little different deal with a conference game tonight. Better competition. They want to play with that same consistency. Coming up tonight, Colt McCoy, of course, leading the way for Texas. His counterpart is Cody Hawkins. Can he come up with a big play and an upset? Could the Longhorns be looking ahead? It's a big night in the SEC. Texas won the toss and deferred, so they'll be kicking away to Colorado. Justin Tucker will tee it up for the Longhorns and Brian Lockridge. And Demetrius Sumler will be back deep. Longhorns have a 12-game home winning streak. Coming off an off week after a big win over UTEP, 64-7. Colorado's had a little extra time, too. They played a week ago Thursday, played pretty well, but came up short against West Virginia. For Colorado, they have lost the last five to this Texas team. 18th game in the series. And, boy, it would be a huge horn in Ralphie's cap if they could pull an upset against the number two team tonight. 
Over 100,000 on hand on a cool night in Austin. Brian Lockridge has trouble with it right at the goal line. One hopped it, and now he's across the 20, and a nice return out to the 34-yard line. That's where Colorado will go to work. Behind Cody Hawkins, the junior, and obviously the son of the head coach. Now, one of the things I think we're going to see with Cody Hawkins tonight, I really think they're going to try to get the ball out of his hands quicker. And Dan Hawkins went back and watched a lot of tape of some teams that are thrown up for a high percentage. He said, you know what, we got to get it out of his hands quicker. They'll move him in the pocket, and they'll throw quicker. Rodney Stewart's behind him, and he gets the call. Stewart, a little guy, but great speed. Got to the corner, and he skipped his way out there for about six yards. Let's take a look at Colorado's impact players tonight. There's the guy we just saw, Rodney Stewart, their leading rusher coming in. Number one receiver, he's caught 29 passes, Scotty McKnight. He needs some help, though, from some of the other guys on the outside. And defensively, Chappelle Brown. Top sack man, as well as being a guy that can hawk the ball and pick it off in the secondary for Colorado defensively. Pick up a seven on the first snap for Stewart. They'll try him again. This time right into the thick of the Longhorns front wall. It'll bring up immediately a third down, and Colorado about a 40% team on third down conversions this year. But they want to keep it in third and short. They definitely don't want to get in a third and long situation against a really good Texas defense. Texas has been strong against the rush. They're number two in the country against the rush, giving up only 47 yards a game. They've given up eight yards and two carries here early in the ballgame. Hawkins first throw. Nice on rhythm toss to Barons. And the big fullback blasts his way into Texas territory, and a flag goes in. Yeah, I think it was a face mask during the tackle, which will tack on some extra yardage for the Buffaloes. A good first throw for Cody Hawkins. Earl Thomas is the one that made the tackle. Personal foul grabbing the face mask by number 12 of the defense. The 15 yard penalty, and it's the first down. And it is on Earl Thomas. Here's another look. Thomas, he got all of it there. Tried to let go. But that'll put 15 more and take it inside the 30. And Todd, you talk about a nice way for yep. Colorado to start. Well, it starts with a good kickoff return, and then uh, they convert their first third down. But really, the first down run by Rodney Stewart kind of got him some momentum. They're already at the 29 of Texas. Stewart tries the left side this time. They're going to track him down, and he's going to lose a yard. Roderick McElroy, the inside linebacker, the guy they call Muck, and he fought through the Muck there to pick up the tackle. And you take a look at the starting lineup defensively for Texas atop your screen. Second year under defensive coordinator Will Muschamp, and it's kind of like like night and day from one year to the next. A second year in the system, more familiarity with the terminology, with what the players can do, playing at a much higher level. Sumler's in a tailback now, and second down and 11. Let's see if Hawkins will put it up. Nope, they're going to keep trying to grind it down, and Sumler does just that. First down, tough run by the bigger back, the 215-pounder, rumbles from 16 yards. The most impressive guy on this Texas defense is Sergio Kendall, number two. All right, they're going to run right at him. And a lot of times with a guy that is that speed and that much athleticism, the best thing to do is to attack right at him. And that time they took a couple big bodies, ran right at him, and were able to get a nice run for the first down. But rather than run away from a guy who's that athletic, sometimes it's best to go right at that number two. There's some folks just walking into Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium going, why are those guys in the white and black inside our 15-yard line? First down. Hawkins swing pass out of the backfield to Stewart. Puts the brakes on and tries to reverse field. Ah, uh, that's not a good idea. Sam Acho. A loss of 11. Well, this is a nice play by Acho because I thought Rodney Stewart was going to turn the corner. He had a blocker out there. Cody Hawkins, his quarterback, was going to lead the blocking out there if he gets around the one last guy in Acho. And Hawkins was getting out there trying to get a block, as you saw. But Acho just too quick. Even though he's 260 pounds, he makes a really nice play. Second down at 21. Darrell Scott now in 
the tailback spot. That's McKnight in motion toward the ball. Corner blitz. Hawkins trying to get it over near McKnight. And it'll bring up third down and long. Dan Hawkins' is fourth year. After five years as a head man at Boise State and so successful there, won 53 games. But it's been tough sledding in Boulder, 14 and 27. So right now what he's wanting his quarterback slash son to do is take care of the football because they're in scoring territory. It's going to be tough to convert this long third down. Get what you can, and let's try to get on the scoreboard first. Here comes the extra pressure on Hawkins. He's going to loft it to the corner. Got his man. Touchdown. Patrick Devaney, the tight end. 25-yard touchdown pass on third and 21. What a beautiful throw. He was working on Keenan Robinson, number one. Here he is, just running a corner route against the linebacker. And the linebacker, Robinson, jumped inside right away and didn't take that outside route away. And a beautiful throw by Hawkins. Great opening drive for Colorado. And Eric Goodman in for the point after. Boy, that'll settle you down on the sideline a little bit. Excellent execution that entire drive by Colorado. Again, started with the kickoff return, the good first run by Stewart, and a couple nice passes by Hawkins. Goodman, extra point is good. As you can see, 11-26 remaining in the first quarter. 66-yard march in eight plays. The capper on third and long. Beautiful pass to the tight end. Colorado touchdown. Todd Cody Hawkins, eighth touchdown pass of the year to his tight end. Yeah, it was a great starting drive for Colorado. Now, Patrick Deveni is just going to run the corner route, and he's going to beat the linebacker. But this guy right here, the free safety, doesn't really help him because Blake Gideon is kind of gets frozen right in the middle of the field, and he doesn't make a move to go help that linebacker until too late. And Hawkins able to get him the football for an all-important first touchdown. What a great way to start for kidding. Colorado. I mean, they have gotten behind quickly yeah. in a couple of their losses so far this season. Devaney wanted two tight ends that they'll use tonight, and that was his second touchdown catch of the year. Great adjustment on the ball, too, right at the goal line. Here's the kick. E.J. Monroe is going to have to take a knee. He's already got a couple returns this year for touchdowns. Well, it's Colt McCoy's turn now. Final word from Major Applewhite and out to the huddle. Offensive player of the year last season in the Big 12. Off to an excellent start this year, too. I guess the only thing people would say was, well, he's got more interceptions than he did at this point last season. Nonetheless, completing 71% of his passes after setting an NCAA record a year ago in that category. Colts in an empty backfield as Vondrell McGee is over in a slot. There's an extra receiver. So first down, Texas. Longhorns at their own 20. McCoy, quick throw, complete, and it's his favorite target, Jordan Shipley. And a pickup of seven as we take a look at the Longhorns impact players. And right off the bat, you got to think about that guy on pace for maybe 100 catches this year. Not only Colt's favorite receiver, his roommate, Sergio Kindle. Todd talked about him coming around the corner. They've run right at him, but he's a sack machine. And Earl Thomas knows what to do in the back end. Three interceptions already for the Longhorns this year. Horns on the ground at a first down. And it is McGee, a pickup of five. Jeff Smart, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Smart, the captain of the defense, one of those rarities, a walk-on who became a captain. <laughs> it doesn't happen yeah. very often. And Texas, as we've seen a lot of teams do, go without a huddle and rather quickly. And Colt deep down the middle and complete out near midfield. Two. Yeah. Yes, sir. Shipley. Jordan Shipley. And that's a quarterback who has a lot of confidence in that particular receiver because there were two Colorado defenders in the area. And Colt McCoy said, you know what, I'm still going to give my guy a chance to make a play. Now he whips it out to John Childs, and Childs goes for five more to the 45. So Texas in their hurry up. 
down by a touchdown and have come out humming from their own 20-yard line. They've worked it to the Colorado 46 here in a hurry. his way toward the first down markers a couple yards short. Curtis Cunningham made the stop defensively for Colorado. Cody Johnson will check in their short yardage guy in the backfield on what's going to be a third down and two. Looks like big Lamar Houston and it is in also a starting defensive tackle is also in as a blocking fullback right there number 33. He's a 300 pounder. I would guess that they're going to try to run behind him. That would be my guess. <laughs> That's a good guess, my friend. I don't think they'll hand it to him. And they follow him, and he doesn't get there. Cody Johnson Cody short. Johnson so that may be an early decision for Mac Brown on a fourth and one at the 42 of Colorado. Well, Houston did his job. Oh, I mean, he got a knockout block. <laughs> but he couldn't block two guys. He could only block one. He got his block on Bernie. I guess. But Jeff Smart was there for the tackle. And Matt Brown will go for it on fourth and one. <laughs> Same setup. High backfield with Houston, the fullback. They'll try the same thing, and this time, it looks like he's got the first down, and he does. Well, back to back plays nearly identical, and they'll move the sticks. Texas keeps the drive going. Mack in his 12th year as a head coach at Texas, 119 wins, 24th year overall, the 205 victory. It was interesting. Mack told us, you know, in a game like this where maybe there's a possibility of being flat, one way to counter that is to have a very aggressive game plan. Well, that first fourth down situation, no hesitation on his part. Let's go for it. Eighth play already in the Texas drive. First down at the 41. Pump fake and now a shovel pass inside in Colorado all over that. Michael Sapilli, the inside linebacker, played it beautifully. Junior out of Honolulu. You take a look at the defense on the top of your screen for the Buffaloes. This is a Colorado defense that, that maybe doesn't have the same kind of overall team speed that other defenses in the Big 12 or around the country have. Got some good players, but they've got to limit the number of big chunk yardage plays that they've given up. You mentioned earlier they've allowed 11 plays of 40 or more yards. Here's a pass in and out of the hands of James Kirkendall. First pass incomplete for Kirkendall. And Colt McCoy says, come on, guys. There's a drop that we could have had and maybe a first down. First incompletion. There's what we were just talking about. Most in the nation giving up those big chunks. Right now, Texas has a chunk left to go on third down. Third and 12. Longhorns, 48% on their third down conversions so far this year. Colorado showing man to man. Here comes a blitz. McCoy throws and Shipley one hands it. What a catch. I mean, this is single coverage. Colt reads it. He sees that safety staying in the middle. It's one-on-one -on -one with his favorite guy. I mean, that, the percentages say you got a good shot of getting the completion there. And now the Longhorns are going to go with their wild horn offense with Childs in a quarterback and Colt McCoy up to the top of your screen as a wide receiver. Childs, a former quarterback, and he's just going to try to weave his way through the traffic, and he got it down to the 17, maybe the 16-yard line. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, said they want to try five to six plays a game with that wild horn formation. And they do have some throws off of it. Childs was a quarterback before he switched to wide receiver. But it's primarily a running set to try to take some of the hits off of Colt McCoy, who was the team's leading rusher in 2008. Now McCoy back in the shotgun on second down at seven. In the red zone where Texas is perfect this year. This time, McCoy does run it, and he runs into a wall and lost a yard. So Pilly, the inside linebacker again, along with Nick Casa, the freshman defensive end. Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator for Colorado, a nice job that time anticipating run, and he called a blitz on second down, a run blitz, 
trying to overload the line of scrimmage, and the read told Colt McCoy he had to pull the ball and run it, but there was nowhere for him to run either. Texas is 23 out of 23 in the red zone this year. That's best in the country. Tied with some other teams, but they've got more scores at 23 for 23. On third down and long, McCoy flushed out of the pocket. They'll have to keep it again. He took a big hit as he flies down near the 15-yard line. He was looking to kind of shovel that pass to Childs and uh, then, then thought about not doing it and trying to pick it up with his feet and not able to come up the first down. That time on third down, Colorado elected to play zone instead of man, and they forced the field goal attempt. And that'll be Hunter Lawrence, who's eight out of nine this year. This will be a 33-yard field goal attempt. High snap, but they got it down, and the kick on the way as Shipley got the hold down. One of his better catches on that drive. Colt McCoy comes up short. Texas does get a field goal, though. They trail it home 7-3 here in Austin. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Chevy. Colorado slightly messing with Texas here in the first quarter in front of a capacity crowd. In Austin, 7-3. Texas had to settle for a field goal of Hunter Lawrence after a 64-yard drive. In 14 plays, they used almost six minutes. The big pass play was Cole McCoy to Jordan Shipley, who made a one-handed catch on the sideline. But then after a play in the Wildhorn and Colt McCoy being stopped for a loss, they faced a third and long and couldn't come up with it. Here's the kickoff. Down to the two-yard line of Daryl Scott. Scott, who they have high hopes for in the backfield for Colorado, goes down with a flag at the 35-yard line. Cooper Castleberry, our referee. We would assume it's an illegal block in the back on the return, but we'll wait and see. Holding by number 52 of the return team. Penalty is 10 yards, and it's first down. Mm, just about the same thing. And a lot of chatter doesn't mean now. That means later. Okay. You've got your phone off, don't you? Yeah, it's off. Okay. So it's first down for Colorado. And in the first nine and a half minutes, they couldn't have asked for more on the road. Well, last year in the game in Boulder, Texas jumped out 21 to nothing on it. And it was 38-7 going into the fourth quarter. So a much better start for the Buffalo. Tight end in motion. They come back with a counter to Stewart. He got whacked right at the line of scrimmage by Roderick Muckleroy. Muckleroy, leading tackler coming in. Had 10 tackles in the matchup with Colorado a year ago. Sergio Kendo calls him neck of steel. He's not like perfectly built, you know, for a middle linebacker. But he will hit you. And there's... Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator. In his second year, as Todd said, the light just kind of goes on for his defenders. They can do so much more now that they understand what he's asking of them this year. Hawkins fires down the middle, tips, and incomplete. Knocked away by Muckleroy. So back-to-back -back plays by the middle linebacker, the senior out of Hallsville, Texas. Reading the quarterback's eyes, feeling the crossing routes. A lot of traffic in there yeah. with Cody Hawkins trying to go with the ball. I, I wouldn't even be surprised to see Dan Hawkins go with a running play here on this third and ten. It, it doesn't suggest a run, but I wouldn't be surprised. Sumler is the guy that's behind him. Hawkins wants to throw a screen. He's going to throw it away. Whatever he was looking for never materialized. And part of the problem for Cody Hawkins is he's listed at 5'11 in the uh, program, which means he's really probably 5'9 and a half, 5'10. He's got a good arm, and he can throw, and he's accurate, but he's got to be able to see. And uh, when those big bodies are flying in at him, sometimes that's tough. Matthew Delalo to punt. Averaging about 41 a kick, and look out for this guy because he knows what to do with it when he gets his hand on it. Shipley, not only a great receiver, but an excellent return man. 
And he's going to have to call fair catch on this one at the 41-yard line. Excellent field position for the Longhorns, though. They're down 7-3 here in the first quarter. Colt McCoy and company set to go to work when we come back. Third by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Ricky Williams, of course, a star tailback here at Texas. 7-3 Colorado. Trey Newton joins Colt McCoy in the Texas backfield. First down for the Horns from their own 41. Here comes a blitz throw over the middle. It's complete. Across the 45. Out to the 46-yard line to Dan Buckner. Buckner kind of an in-betweener. Uh, they list him as a tight end. H-back type tight end. And Greg Davis said as a, as a wide receiver, he's just sort of a guy. But he's a matchup problem at 6'4", 215, as he showed right there. Second down at five. McGee got outside the 47-yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, here's 7-3. Texas approaching midfield. They got it across midfield as Jordan Shipley's got another catch and another Texas first down. We talked about these two being roommates. They've been buddies since they were kids when their dads played college football together. And it is definitely a chemistry those two yeah, guys have. Absolutely. And, uh, and it shows on the field, off the field, uh, when they go hunting and fishing on their, <laughs> on their days off when they get a chance. Flags are down as Colt McCoy throws complete across the middle to McGee. But again, a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Where you see that with wide receivers and quarterbacks, though, is just the, the unspoken communication on the field is, is really evident with these two. Offside by number 90 of the defense. Penalties five yards and replay first down. Marquez Harad, the defensive end. And he's going out after the penalty being offside. And it'll make it first down and five. This is a great spot you can play with a little bit on first and five at the 41-yard line. McCoy is seven out of eight throwing the football. And the other one was dropped. Yeah, they keep it on the ground, and they lost a yard. He didn't seem to get anything going with the running game. Forrest West made the stop. So they wasted that three, five yards yep. by losing one. Right now, the Colorado defensive front pretty much up to the task in the running game against Texas. And even with a quarterback as good as Colt McCoy, if you can make any offense one-dimensional, it, it helps you as a defense. Here's Colt McCoy and a quarterback draw. And Colt McCoy's got a first down and wisely hits the turf at about the 31-yard line. We talked to him yesterday and mentioned to him, you don't run as much by design, do you? And he said... I think I've only had one quarterback draw called all the year. This one was a quarterback draw all the way. And it was a timely one. And, you know, when you're struggling a little bit, go to the quarterback run. And now Childs, the ex-quarterback, run out of bounds after a nice gain of seven. And again, Texas hurrying things up. This worked for them on the first drive until they stalled on a third and long. That's the second time they've snapped the ball fast. I mean, there's one thing to go no huddle. It's another thing to go real quick and snap the ball fast. That's the second play where they tried to line up and go really fast. McCoy throws on the run, and it's complete, and it should be a first down to Childs. And it is. So they've worked it down to close to the 21-yard line. And again, the four wide receivers for Colt McCoy. First down at the Buffaloes 21. Texas trailing with a minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. Nice numbers considering the other one was dropped. McGee. Worked it inside the 20. That's about it, though. Jeff Smarts and a whole herd of Buffalo there to make the stop. See, the thing about the Colorado or the Texas no huddle and their ability to go fast when they want to is they can do it a lot of the times without substituting personnel. Now, in this case, they brought, they made a change at the tailback position. But a lot of times they can line up and get into a lot of different things with the same personnel, which forces the defense to stay with their same personnel as well. They change their tailback, but it's Fozzie Whitaker way up to the top of your screen. So it's a lonesome backfield as McCoy throws to Shipley again. Out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pick up with seven more. Greg Davis dialing up 
both the run and the pass, and right now it's the pass that's working. There's Greg, longtime offensive coordinator, right in the middle of your screen. Yep. I really like about what he's done in his time at Texas is, is molded the offense around the guys that he's had and what his strengths. When he first got here, Ricky Williams was the go-to guy. It was a run-oriented offense. He's really changed it with his personnel. Oh, it's going to be a free first down, I think, for Texas. They can take the first down on the penalty, or they can take Cody Johnson's run. Either way, they're going to have it. First and goal. Just a matter of which play will be taken. Somebody jumped in the neutral zone. I think it was Sapilli, the middle linebacker, who was going to come on a blitz, and he came in there too early. You had the first down, right? You made more than five, and they had the first down. Offside, number 10 on the defense. Penalty's five yards, and it's enough for a first down. Well, the run was about four. The penalty was five. How do you have confidence in when to throw to a guy? Well, when he catches everything you throw to him, <laughs> that, that goes a long way with a quarterback, let me tell you. He's got 34 catches on the year with the five tonight so far. Thank you, part. He's got 41 catches now with the five he's got tonight. Let's see if they get one more play before the end of the quarter. First and goal, Texas. Just... On the final seconds, they take it down to about the five-yard line. What it's going to do is it's going to make the band really happy on the other end because we're going to switch sides. We played 15 in Austin. Colorado doing a good job on the road. Texas is threatening to start the second quarter when we come back. There's the view from the band in the end zone. And the cannon on the far end. Yeah. Well, you made the point the band would be happy that the team switch ends. Colorado's defense, obviously, they don't want to give up the score, but if they do, at least they're away from that cannon blowing up in the back of their heads. I mean, that thing is loud. And those, I jump every time I hear it. And those guys got itchy trigger fingers mm. down there. Second down a goal to open the second quarter for Texas. Colt McCoy in trouble. Doesn't get sacked often, but down he goes. Cunningham and Rod are there. And that's only the fourth sack given up by Texas this year. And the 11th sack of the season for Colorado. So a nice job getting pressure, a little stunt on the inside, exchanging the tackles and ends, and they get to the quarterback. So now it backs up Texas to a third down and goal. Shipley, the lone receiver up here. Buckner, the biggest targets on the right side. And the throw is behind... James Kirkendall. I don't know if Kirkendall was thinking one thing and Colt was thinking he was going to run it out, but a little miscommunication there, and it's going to be field goal time again for the Longhorns. All these receivers for Texas are playing new positions, including Shipley. Shipley was the slot receiver last year. Now he's the single side receiver, which is where Quam Cosby played last year. So obvious miscommunication on that play. And another field goal attempt for the Longhorns. Hunter Lawrence hit his first one from 32. He'll try to make it a one-point game here early in the second quarter. Again, Shipley to hold. And the kick is blocked. Colorado with a block and the scoop. Buffaloes have it all the way out of the 45-yard line. Jeff Smart's got it in hand. Big play by the Colorado special teams. See if we can see who got it. Looks like Benjamin Bernie, number 42, came off the corner and may have gotten that one, but it was a an outstanding play by the special teams. The little things. If you want to hang around and have a chance against a top-ranked team, you got to do little things. And special teams is one of those areas. They had a good kick return to start their scoring drive, and now a block on a field goal attempt. Just the kind of things Mac Brown was telling us in his office yesterday that he's been warning his Longhorns about all week. And now Rodney Stewart almost broke that. Wow. That was close. <laughs> Got a first down, but he was almost off to the races. Yeah. I'm not sure which Longhorn they're going to give credit for this tackle, but I think it was the turf monkey. I don't think it was a player. <laughs> 
That was all turf. Maybe Keenan Robinson, but I'm with you. I think Wolfang, the invisible dog, got him down there at the 48-yard line. Second and shorts. Stewart fighting his way, and I think he's got a first yeah. down. Boy, he just wouldn't go down. Well, you know, it looked like McElroy was trying to grab the ball away from him instead of driving him backwards, and that enabled Stewart, who's not very big at all, to wrestle his way forward for a first down. You know, talking with Lamar Houston, one of the leaders of the Texas defense, he says this guy is hard to bring down because you can't find him, first of all. Watch McElroy. He's trying to rip the ball out instead of just make a tackle, and that enabled Stewart to get an important first down. Now the crowd finally waking up for the defense. They've been sleeping the entire first quarter and here early in the seconds. Now they know there's a ball game going on all of a sudden. Sumler and Texas defense knows there's a ball game going on too. McElroy and Sergio Kindle stretch that one out at a loss on the play. We asked Will Muschamp about Sergio Kindle, what made him so special, and, and, and what they, what he said was two things, his six-inch explosion, his first step, how quick he is off the ball, and the strength of his hands. He says he's got the strongest hands of anybody that he's been around coaching, and it's just a matter of, of him learning how to play with his hand on the ground some as a defensive end, because last year he played linebacker almost exclusively. Second down at 13. McKnight, the motion man for Hawkins in the shotgun. Gets rid of it in a hurry and in and out of the hands of McKnight. Brown made the play defensively. That was a good throw, but an excellent play by Shockey Brown. I mean, he was right there on the slant and got his right hand on the football. And a third and long situation now for Colorado. Even if they get some of this, I wouldn't be shocked if Dan Hawkins pulls the plug. Matt Brown said, I think he's going to do everything he can. Go on fourth down, whatever it takes. First of all, they're going to try to pick up the third down. Third and 13 from midfield. Hawkins is going to try to roll away from the pressure. Here comes Houston, and he's got to get rid of it. Lamar Houston putting on the heat. And now they will have to kick. It's going to be fourth down and long. Nice job by number 33. Delalo coming in to punt. You look behind him. Only the second player in Colorado history to be a four-year starter at that punting position. Oh, and he just got that one away. Well, that was a slow snap, too. And it's going to take a great bounce, so if Colorado can get there, and they do, inside the Texas Five at about the three-yard line. 46-yard kick with a beautiful roll for Delalo. Texas in a hole and trailing by four when we come back. You hear that? That's necessarily <laughs> not good news. First two drives for the Longhorns. They got a field goal after 14 plays and then a blocked field goal after 13 plays. And now they have to start at their own three-yard line, and that means Colt McCoy in the end zone. Gives it off to Johnson. And Cody Johnson got outside the five. And so if you're watching this and you're cheering for Colorado, you say, wow, that's a lot of plays. 27 plays. They but they haven't given up the big play. And that's what we said coming in. They, they can't give up the easy, big chunk of yardage plays. Make Texas try to earn the ball, earn any points by driving the ball. They gave up one field goal. They blocked another. They've given up a lot of plays, but no big plays so far. Sometimes the more plays you make them play, the more chances to drop the football or have it intercepted or fumbled. Cody Johnson, again, as you're trying to work outside the 10-yard line, and we check in with Aaron. And, Brad, you know, I was on the sidelines last week when Colorado was in Morgantown against West Virginia, and that was something these coordinators and coaches told us uh, from the Buffalo team, that they said, basically, you know, we held our own for a good three quarters, and that was against a team that had a lot of speed, a lot of talent, and that was something they were really hoping to build off of. I think they have. Aaron, I agree with you 100%. They look good tonight, and they don't look rattled by being in front of 100,000 wearing burnt orange. Third and five. You think about Shipley here? Nope, Buckner. And he's got the first down. See, the good thing that Buckner did there was realize, okay, I'm 6'4", 215. Let me just get to my spot and turn around and give the quarterback a great target, that big number four on my jersey. Let me turn it right for him to see, and he'll hit me right in the middle of my chest. 
And that's a first down for Texas. And Buckner has had five or more catches in all four of the games so far coming into this one tonight. Play action. McCoy fires it down the middle, and Buckner's got another one. And another first down. Pickup of about 14. Because he's a slot receiver or a flex receiver, he gets a lot of good matchups. Here's that quick snap again. Now the throw out to Childs. They were trying to wide out screen and flags down as Childs got about a yard. Jimmy Smith was out there, and it's going to be... Holding number 11 of the offense. Penalty is 10 yards, and replay first down. James Kirkendall with a holding call out there, trying to get a lead block for Childs. And instead picks up a holding call. Kirkendall hasn't had a night to remember so far yeah. with a holding call and a drop pass. And see, you made the point, the more plays you make an offense run, the greater chance of them putting it on the ground. Well, the greater chance of this, too. A penalty that sets them back. Right. Kind of makes them go backwards a little bit. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go in the half. Seven to three, if you're just joining us, Colorado. A long ways from pulling off an upset, but so far they're doing a good job. Here's a screen pass to McGee. Fondrell McGee's got blockers in front. Got out across the original line of scrimmage to the 30-yard line. McGee, Jr. out of Longview, Texas. We'll see him tonight. We'll see Trey Newton, Cody Johnson we've seen in short yardage. Fozzie Whitaker has played some, but mostly he's split out as a wide receiver so far tonight. In this case, empty backfield with McGee as the extra wideout for Colt McCoy on second down and eight. Plenty of time. McCoy just zips it to Buckner again. He's about a yard shy of the first down. And for Buckner, his fourth catch. So it looks like another night that he's going to have five or more. Career high is six catches in the win over Wyoming. Quick snap, McGee hitting the backfield. Colorado was ready. They were. They were ready for the quick snap. So again, they step it up defensively just when they need to. It looked like they weren't going to be ready, but they attacked the line of scrimmage. As soon as they read run, the secondary of Colorado attacked the line of scrimmage and made the play behind it for a loss of yardage. This crowd is a little bit stunned, to be honest with you. They were quiet at the beginning. They're even more quiet now. This is exactly the kind of thing, as we said, Mac Brown and the Texas coaching staff was trying to warn this team about. If you don't get ready for Colorado, you'll never be ready for Oklahoma. And forget about all the other stuff if you lose this game. On the bounce, Espinoza. Gutsy little return to pick up of 13 on the return. When we return, it's Colorado on offense. And yes, the Buffaloes lead the number two team in the country. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Aflac. We've got you under our way. And Dr. Pepper. Drink it slow. Doctor's orders. Yeah, good look at 6th Street here in Austin. I've spent some nights down there doing research. Just so we have those great shots, I go with the camera guys. That's really all I do down there. Kind of like Red River Street down there as well. But back to the action at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. With Colorado in front, Rodney Stewart lost a yard. Ben Alexander in on the tackle for Texas. A night of ball control here with eight minutes remaining in the first half. Well, Texas has had the better of it. There's no question of that. But they have not, don't have the points to show for it. So, so Colorado has allowed them to move the ball, kind of a bend but don't break philosophy. And they still have the lead midway through the second quarter because of it. Stewart. This time, positive yardage out to the 42, almost a 43-yard line. Curtis Brown made the stop, and it'll bring up another Colorado third down. But we're down to seven and a half minutes in the half. Colorado, remember, their opening march, 66 yards and eight plays. And on a third and 21, Dan Hawkins' son, Cody, threw to the end zone to Patrick Devaney for a touchdown on third and long. That's what got them their score. Texas is... Had a field goal and had one blocks. Bo 
Buffalo's third and four. Hawkins fires complete, and it's a first down. What? Seamus on a crossing route. This is the guy that they hope can really emerge as the other guy. I mean, Scotty McKnight has been their go-to guy, averaging seven catches a game. Marcus Seamus had some uh, some issues, some injuries, wasn't able to play earlier in the season, and uh, made a couple catches in their last game against West Virginia, caught the last touchdown for Colorado, but they think he's got a lot of ability, 6'2", 215. Hawkins with three big completions on third down now. First it down at the 48. Back to the ground game. And Sumler picks up four as he goes into Texas territory. And we approach the six-minute mark. And with that, it is time for tonight's trivia question. What coach holds the longest active football bowl subdivision streak for consecutive winning seasons? Take that one over. He was in the news this week for a reason he just assumed not be. I hate to give you a hint. You probably know it anyway, but there's your hint. Second down and six. Hawkins, quick slant, got it again to Seamus. And he's got a first down, and we go out to Reese Davis. Reese. Bobby Bowden's only lost once to Georgia Tech, and that was last year in Atlanta. First and ten for the Buffaloes. At the 40, here's Stewart going wide, and he's got eight more. He's been a tough little runner tonight. Well, Mac Brown told Aaron before the game, it's the first time we've played a team that really is going to try to line up and run the football. This is not the way most teams play offense in the Big 12. Most of them are spread and throw the football around, run a counter, run a draw out of the spread formation. But Colorado, a lot of two tight end, big physical offensive linemen. And a back who knows how to kind of fit in behind there and run the football. Perfect. Actually, a couple of them. Perfect word for it. Fitting in. Second and two. This time, the fit wasn't right. Emmanuel Acho, the outside linebacker, and younger brother Sam makes the stop and a loss on the play. Tough to bounce it outside on this defense because of the speed. I mean, the, the Texas defense has a lot of speed. And that time, Stewart tried to bounce outside and nowhere to go. Well, the crowd realizes here with 425 to go in the half that all these third downs, and especially the ones that Cody Hawkins has been able to pick up, are getting bigger and bigger and bigger here before halftime. Texas looks like they might bring some extra pressure. Third and three. They won't. Well, there's flags down, and the pass is in and out of the hands of Scotty McKnight. But again, penalty marker on the play. Yeah, it's a dead ball penalty. So uh, Prior to the snap, there was a false start by number six of the offense. The five-yard penalty, and still third down. If you're ever going to have a good penalty, there's one yeah. right there. Yeah, you at least get to line up and try it again. And while it will probably be a different play, and something deeper down the field, at least they have another chance. Third and eight from the 38. Will Jefferson comes in, an extra wide receiver. Sumler comes in in the backfield. Scotty McKnight, who Hawkins threw to on that last play, has been held without a catch so far tonight. Colorado's going to talk it over. Big third down with 3.44 to go in the half, and Colorado leading on the road. Here, the board says third down and long for Colorado. Leading 7-3. McKnight in motion. Fumble. Hawkins has to cover, and he almost lost it when he rolled over. So now they back it up to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, just a not a clean exchange. It looked like the ball was up. The center, Keenan Stevens, number 56, and Hawkins not able to handle it and does the right thing of falling on it. You don't want to help this Texas team at all. You've played well. You've outplayed them to this point. Continue to try to help your defense with the long field. Delalo's last punt, he dropped down with the roll at about the three-yard line. He's trying to keep it out of Jordan Shipley's hands, and I don't blame him, but this one will not take as effective a roll, but it will go inside the 20-yard line. 3.02 remaining in the half. Texas with the ball coming up. We asked you... A little bit earlier, our 
Affleck, trivia question. What coach holds the longest active streak for consecutive winning seasons? The answer? Bobby Bodden, 32 years, 27 consecutive bowl appearances, and Mac Brown is next in line at 19. 12 years here in Texas, successful seasons before that at the University of North Carolina. Here's Colt McCoy, he's in trouble, and the ball is out. Colorado's got it. First and goal, Buffaloes. Wow. Another mistake, it's Jimmy Smith with a fumble recovery. The second sack of the ball game for Colorado. They get in on McCoy, and then he doesn't take care of the football. He tried to pack it away and not able to, and a huge turnover for the Colorado team. Marcus Burton forced the fumble. Jimmy Smith recovers, and Colorado at the six-yard line. And now Will Muschamp is going, let's hold these guys to a field goal. Remember all those negative statistics we saw about Colorado at the beginning of the game? They don't matter right now. Stewart, the tailback. First and goal for the Buffaloes. And Stewart's banged by McElroy, but a penalty marker down before the play got going. Prior to the snap. A false start by the right guard. A five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Dan Hawkins says who? It's a right guard. Brian Miller. Looks more like the right tackle to me. Boy, that, that, that hurts, though. You know, you get the turnover, you're down inside the 10. You got to have some poise and execute down here when you get a break like this. First and goal at the 11 now. Hawkins to the end zone and wide open touchdown. Ryer Gear, the tight end, and for the second time tonight, Hawkins finds his tight end for a score. Yeah, Texas was thinking run all the way. They didn't even cover Gear. The play fake held him. Here he is right here on the end. He's going to run to the corner and watch the entire Texas defense bite on the on the play fake by Hawkins and lead the tight end go. Nobody runs with him. Sergio Kendall looks like he was the guy responsible for coverage. Extra point by Goodman is up and good with 2.51 remaining. Shocker. As the Colorado Buffaloes on the road in Big 12 play in their opener, and they're trying to open things up on number two, Texas, 14-3. All right, Reese, you talk about a hot Big 12 quarterback. We would have thought that would be Colt McCoy we'd yeah. be talking about here tonight. It's Cody Hawkins instead as he's hit both his tight ends with touchdown passes in the first half in a shocking first two quarters. Colorado leading number two, Texas, 14-3. Jordan Shipley waits on the other end with D.J. Monroe. Shipley only out to about the 23-yard line. Well, you come into this game and you go, they're the number two team in the country. They're playing at home. They had a week off to prepare for this game. They've got Oklahoma next. Right. And partner, the great equalizers turnovers every Absolutely. time. Well, they, they got the turnover on the sack that led to the touchdown. They also had to block field goal, which you, you count as a turnover. So they, Colorado has done what they needed to do. They've had pretty good balance. Their quarterback has taken care of the football, and they've created some turnovers and some momen momentum plays to slow this Texas team down. Colt McCoy now back to work. They've got their full count of timeouts through the Longhorns. Colt over the middle and a pickup of about eight to Vondrell McGee. And they'll go, obviously, with their hurry-up grouping here with only two and a half minutes remaining in the half. Any kind of score for Texas going to the locker room would bolster what they want to do starting in the second half. A lot of people thought by this point a lot of folks would be going outside eating their brisket. That ain't happening. McCoy incomplete intended for McGee. You see a little bit of a shake of the head yep. of Colt McCoy. He's so used to completing virtually all his passes, as we said, set a record last year, completing 77%. He's 15 out of 18 in the first half tonight. And that guy can't bear to watch, I guess. 
I'm not sure why he's wearing an ACC jersey anyway <laughs> in a Big 12 game. They're down at two. Boy, they need this one just to keep things going. McCoy, it's tipped, but it's caught by McGee, and it is a first down. Somebody got a hand on it, sort of whirly birded out there to number two. And they'll move the sticks, temporarily stopping the clock with 2-12. And did get knocked around in there. Good job by McGee concentrating on the football. Backs in this offense have to be able to split out wide and catch the ball as well as run it. So we're under two minutes and a first down. Colt McCoy scans the field. That one looked kind of weird, too. I don't know if it was touched, but it is complete to Kirkendall. Short gain. Texas trying to run up to the line in a hurry. Again, I can't say enough how important it's been for Colorado in this first half to limit the big plays. Other than the one catch by Shipley down the sideline, everything else has been kind of dink and dunk for Colt McCoy so far. McCoy fires again, complete to Kirkendall at midfield, and that's going to be another first down. Benjamin Burney made the stop, but they moved the sticks. And that was kind of a dunk where you take off just from inside the foul line, a little bit longer than a dunk. <laughs> a little flair to it. Uh-huh. Now McCoy in an empty backfield. You know, one of these times he's going to try to find Shipley, who's in a slot on the right-hand side right now. There's a throw to Shipley, but it's just a short crossing route. It got uh, three or four. And yeah, we're down to 107. Got a timeout taken by Colorado. They can regroup a little bit defensively. There are many things to discover at the University of Texas at Austin. Art, science, curious thinkers, open minds, and quite possibly yourself. What starts here changes the world. I may have said Colorado timeout. Texas took the timeout. And there's the battery, McCoy and Shipley who would like to hook up and get a big chunk of yardage and at least get Hunter Lawrence a field goal attempt. Cody Hawkins kind of waving around to the music over there, and why not? He's had a big first half. They have not been rattled at all by the Longhorn defense or this huge crowd. And quite frankly, the crowd hadn't had anything to make any noise about so far. Second down and six at the 46 for Texas. Two timeouts remaining. Here's a slip screen to the wide receiver, Goodwin. And Goodwin's going to have the first down, it appears. So one minute exactly. Douglas Rippey, the outside linebacker, is the guy that's down for Colorado. You know what I said. <laughs> Freshman out of Trotwood, Ohio. He's been a big guy in special teams. Blocked a couple of punts already this year for Colorado. And they're working on the left leg of Douglas Rippey. One minute left in the half. Colorado pulling a shocker here through two quarters against the number two team in the country. Colorado, Cody Hawkins has been great. This is on third and 21, a 25-yard touchdown pass to Patrick Devaney in the corner of the end zone. And then the blocked kick, Ryan Miller actually is the guy that blocked the field goal. Jeff Smart scooped it up. And then Colt McCoy, Marcus Burton swatted it out of his hands. Jimmy Smith recovered. And that left Cody Hawkins a chance to go to his other tight end. Wide open. And it is 14 to 3. And Colorado has followed their plan perfectly. I mean, they've had a good mix of run pass. Their quarterback has taken care of the football. They've won the turnover battle. 
And then defensively, they have limited the gains by this Texas offense. They haven't given up the big explosive play. Coming into the game, that was a problem. Their last game against West Virginia, even though they did a lot of good things, they gave up some huge plays to some skill guys at West Virginia, and uh, the game got away from them. This game has not gotten away from them at all. Colorado's going to come with a blitz off the corner. McGee picks that up. McCoy is going deep. Got a man. Shipley. Touchdown. Didn't we say you just could feel that he was going to find number eight on a long ball pretty soon? Well, pretty timely. 39-yard touchdown pass. Huge play before halftime for Texas. 78-yard drive in eight plays. A little over two minutes to get this one. Double move. He fakes the post. Jaleel Brown bites on the post fake, and then he's flat-footed, and Shipley runs right by him. We just said, Colorado, the reason they were in this position, they have not given up the big chunk of yardage play, and right before halftime, they relax a little bit, and Colt McCoy makes them pay for it. Colt McCoy's... 10th touchdown pass of the year to his favorite target. Jordan Shipley's third touchdown reception of the season. And just like that, the complexion of the game before heading to the locker room for both teams has drastically changed. knows exactly how you're going to run that route. You've run it over and over through the summer, and you just have a great feel for one another. Here it is again. Watch him sell the post with his body, his head, his oh. eyes, and Jaleel Brown gets just screwed right into the ground. Wow. And then McCoy finds him in the end zone. That's as good a route as you can run. Huh? Here's a squib kick. Takes a big hop. Picked up at the 15. And flags fly in as Sumler goes down. They had a holding call earlier on a kick return. Looks like we might have another. Holding by number 33 of the return team. It's a 10-yard penalty, and it's first down. Well, you would think that Colorado would be pretty ready to just say, let's go to the locker room with a four-point lead against the number two team in the country. But they do have two timeouts if they choose to try to Gain some ground here. Uh, I think you got to just run the football, take care of it, and go into the locker room. Uh, you played in an outstanding first half offensively and defensively up until that last play you had as well. Stewart put the brakes out and jumps into the hole for a couple, maybe three. And we're down to a half minutes remaining. Well, we said coming into this game an hour and a half or so ago that Todd and I and Aaron were in agreement that Colorado was not as bad as their record. One and three, and coming off a loss to West Virginia in a game that they were pretty much in in the second half and then let it get away. And tonight, even better. Yep. I think if uh, you'd have said to... Dan Hawkins, Hawk will give you a four-point lead against number two Texas going to the locker room. He'd say, what are you saying right here? Let's head in there, boys. We'll take it. 14 to 10, Colorado leading the number two team in the nation. A little bit of a shock as we get out of Aaron Andrews. You could just see the look on Colt McCoy's face, kind of relief. What finally worked in that scoring drive? Well, we were more consistent, Aaron. We've had drop balls. We've had holding penalties. Uh, we had the block field goal. We didn't score in the red zone. We're in situations where we're 
losing our field position because of, of things we're not doing well offensively. So we just got to keep playing. I, I think we've settled down now and give Colorado credit. They're playing real well. Why are all those things happening, Mac? Well, you never know. If you did, there'd be a lot of people coaching. <laughs> <laughs> you stick to it. Better than a weatherman, right? He predicted 70 degrees, Brad, tonight. Yeah, he didn't get that one right, but at least he's got a smile on his face with that late touchdown that's cut the lead to 14 to 10 as we head to the Wendy's halftime report. Reese Davis and the guys, fellas.